Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vivian Flanzer. I am a professor of instruction and the director of the Portuguese language program here at the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, today I'm gonna talk about um, teaching Portuguese as a foreign language with Clica Brasil. Uh, the open educational resource or the OER that I created here at UT Austin with the support from CORAL, the Center for Open Educational Resources and Language Learning, and LATE, Liberal Arts Instructional Technology Services. So let me tell you really very quickly about myself. Um, I was born and raised in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where I spent where I live half of my life, and the other half here in the United States, where I have been teaching Portuguese for 27 years, long time. Um, I also have a very eclectic educational background. I have a BA in uh, communications and a master's in social anthropology, these degrees from Brazil. And here in the US, I completed another master in uh, foreign language education and a PhD in linguist in Lusophone and Hispanic linguistics. And I, I really believe that this diverse educational background influences my work as a professor and also as a creator of um, educational materials. So let's talk about Clica Brasil. What is Clica Brasil? Give me a moment here. Okay, that's not good. Okay, all right. Um, so, Clica Brasil, Portuguese Language and Culture for Intermediate Students, is an OER uh, that I created in 2010 and updated in 2019. Uh, to help intermediate Portuguese learners to improve their Portuguese language skills at the same time as increasing their uh, intercultural competence and knowledge of the Luso Brazilian culture. And at, as it is an open educational resource, it's totally free and accessible to anyone. In this presentation, I will talk about the origins of Clica Brasil, its making of process, also give you an overview of the website and the textbook, showcase its use in and out of the classroom, and also talk briefly about the students' perspectives and the advantages of working with this OER. So, um, why? I, why? Why did I did I do Click of Brazil? As you see, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Um, when I started to teach Portuguese as a foreign language uh, back in 1995, I faced some challenges, and the biggest of all was the scarcity of teaching materials, especially at the intermediate level. So I started to create my own materials out of necessity. And like most of my colleagues who teach Portuguese and especially Portuguese as a foreign language, I used uh, crônicas as the basis of these materials. So crônicas, they are a Brazilian literary genre about social, political, or cultural phenomena. And they're perfect for teaching Portuguese as a foreign language because they're very short, they're very succinct and very fun and enjoyable to read. And it, they intersperse the traditional grammar in the narrative, but also uh, typically have a very accurate reproduction of oral language in the dialogue. So it's, it's great for teaching both. And they are inspired by you know, daily Brazilian activities. So they offer a window into the cultural and sociological context of urban Brazil. It, they are really embedded in the Brazilian uh, culture. So the, the materials that I created, they, they were working really, really well, uh, except for what I call the cultural, some cultural gaps, right? So what is that? Uh, the students, they, they understood and they enjoyed the readings, enjoyed the activities, but they misunderstood several parts of the stories, not due to, you know, lack of language knowledge, 
but to a lack of the social cultural knowledge, right? They, they didn't know enough about the culture or the society to understand all the references in the story. So as a teacher, of course, I started to act as, let's say, as a cultural translator, explaining them um, all this background about Brazilian society so they could understand the story. But I didn't mind doing that, but it kind of bothered me in a way because being an anthropologist, I know that uh, there are different points of view on you know, our culture, right? I'm a woman from Rio of a certain age and a background and the way I see the culture of my country or of my city, it's different than other people that other Brazilians uh, see it. So I used to always think to myself, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could bring to the classroom a lot of Brazilians from different regions, different walks of life, uh, with a very diverse background to have these discussions with my students and uh, discuss those stories with them. And that's how the idea of um, Clica Brazil was born. So I wanted to create um, material that improved learners' reading, writing, listening, speaking skills, also vocabulary and grammar in the context of the Brazilian culture. At the same time, enhancing critical thinking and analytical and cross-cultural skills, of course, provide a diverse and contemporary vision of Brazilian culture and society. And by that, exposing students to social linguistic variation and at the same time, increasing motivation and showing that language learning, including grammar and reading, because some students are usually scared about, but show them that that can actually be um, a lot of fun. So with that in mind, in 2010, I apply and I got a grant from UT and that grant gave me one camera, a lot of tapes and technical support uh, to build the website. So in that summer, I went to Brazil to visit my family and to do some work and I, I took the camera with me. So what I did, I filmed people from all walks of life uh, from different regions of Brazil. And I asked them to talk about their lives, to talk about Brazil, but also about those topics that arise from the readings the, the ones that my students couldn't understand for their lack of, um, of the, the cultural or social knowledge about Brazil. Uh, so this way I captured not only different experiences and different opinions, but also different accents and different ways of speaking. And all of these testimonies, they are 100% spontaneous. Nothing was rehearsed, nothing was talked before. It was just a spontaneous conversation between these people and myself. I knew some of the people, others I've never met before, and we were just talking and, and filming in a very spontaneous way. So I can say I, I capture real language, right? In the way we, we normally um, speak. Uh, well, with that in mind, I must add that, of course, I had limited funding and a uh, limited time, right? Just a summer to do all this project. And as I said, I filmed where I travel. I am from Rio, so I filmed in Rio. I led the study abroad program in Bahia. So I filmed in Bahia. And I was also luckily that summer in the Amazon for research purposes. So I filmed there too. Uh, and in Rio, I was lucky to film not only Cariocas, but the uh, native people from Rio de Janeiro, but also people from other regions and other um, several parts of Brazil and even uh, a person from Portugal. So I was very lucky that way. But unfortunately, and of course, due to, la due to lack of time and funding, I wasn't able to film, you know, other Lusophone countries and our other regions of Brazil for an even broader variety of um, Portuguese speakers. So this open educational resource uh, consists of a website, you see the link here, and a textbook. The textbook you can purchase through the website and it's also downloadable for free uh, in the form of uh, PDF and also Google Docs. So 
Um, Clicker Brazil, as I said, is based on authentic materials, right? Inclu including the chronicles, these readings um, I, I mentioned about, and the readings are integrated with videos. I have 157 videos from 28 different speakers. You can see some of them here. I also have 350 activities, including reading, writing, speaking, listening comprehension, vocabulary, cultural activities, uh, oral activities as well. Uh, 104 pages of grammatical explanations and verb conjugations, and also 36 pages of vocabulary lists with explanations within the context of the readings and the videos. So there is um, uh, a, a lot of stuff there. So here is the link to the website, and that's the homepage where you can see the textbook, the link to the grammar bank, uh, an introduction, and this green button where we have the units, right? Um, so let, let's click on that button. As you can see, um, we have several, seven units in, in Clico Brazil. And each of them has lots of videos, activities, and readings, as I'm going to show um, na next. So let's click on the first one, Todos os Dias, and, and see what happens. That will take us to this page, the first page when you open a unit. And so as you can see here, each unit has four different sections, right? And uh, so let, let's go over this section. So first we start with Pano de Fundo, which translates something like a backdrop. And the purpose of this section is to activate the background knowledge. So to provide social cultural context and fill in some of those cultural gaps that the students need to understand all the passages from, from the reading. Then we have the leitura, or the reading where students will have access to a reading. It can be a chronica, short story, or other kinds of texts and with glossaries. Then we go to the grammar section where uh, we either review or learn uh, more complex grammatical structures that arise from these videos and, or, and the, 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 the readings and we will learn the grammar in the context of those authentic materials. And finally, we have Aproximando Foco, which will translate with something like zooming in, where we will go back to this social cultural uh, context of the readings and the videos, but now more in, in depth. We'll discuss more in depth these um, issues that arise uh, from the readings through the voices of the different Brazilians. Also, each section, as I said, they have videos. You can click here to, in, to click different videos. And each video has a Portuguese transcription and an English translation. As well, each section has um, activities and an answer key to all the activities. So if you click here on an activity, you will go to a Google Doc, which is very easy for the student. Um, they can write and save on their computer, email to the instructor, upload on Canvas or whatever platform um, you're working with. It makes it very easy and uh, straightforward to work with. They also have access to an answer key for immediate feedback and improve their learning. I'm a believer of answer keys. And uh, as I said, out of the unit sections, you have here the grammar bank with lots of verb tenses explanations and verb conjugations and a lot of important stuff so they can navigate and um, work with the different So let me give you a, on a specific example of um, how Click of Brazil works. So let's go to our unit four. <laughs> uh, it's called Rio de Norte Sul or Rio from North and, and South. So 
in this unity, uh, the, the reading is about a character who lives in the Zona Norte or the north side of Rio, Rio de Janeiro. And she is meeting another character in an apartment in the Zona Sul, the south side where he lives for their first uh, romantic encounter. After a while, the police invade the apartment because the burglar got through the area de serviço, even if the apartment was locked. And then photographers and the TV crew arrives. And um, next thing you know, our character is in national TV and she, everybody sees her and her neighbors compares her with um, Dina's fat. So the students enjoy the, the story. It's funny, it's easy to read. Um, but what they miss is that this story, it's also an uh, allegory, right? It's a sophisticated and humorous social critique about the city of Rio de Janeiro. But in the first re reading, students who are not from Rio, who doesn't know the Carioca culture in depth, they will miss important cultural references and the social critique of the reading because they aren't aware that Zona Norte or the North South and Zona Sul, besides being geographic subdivisions of Rio, these two areas carry strong social cultural connotations. The, the South, is um, identified with the beaches, with tourism, with the bossa nova, while the north is identified with the um, uh, industrial part, the origins of, of samba. They also cannot understand uh, how the burglar got into the apartment because the apartment was locked, because they typically don't know what an area de serviço is. And I'm not going to tell you right away because I'm going to keep the mystery a little bit. So they, they, they really don't understand that part of the story. And also because they don't know uh, who is Dina's fat, they miss that uh, reference too. So how does Clica Brasil can help the learner to get those social cultural references while at the same time honing their language skills? As I said, first we start with the Pano de Fundo with the background where they will learn um, you know, more about uh, those cultural gaps, right? It will help to fill in those cultural gaps that they don't know so they can understand the, the story. So first in the background section, they watch a video with uh, a literature professor and she explains very beautifully the history of Rio and especially the history of the Zona Norte and the Zona Sul, the North and the South. And they, students do a listening comprehension activities that underscore the differences of those areas, but also they learn how those two different uh, regions, they are mutually constitutive of the construction of the city's identity and we can't uh, dissociate them. Uh, next, they see a video of an area de serviço <laughs> and they learn that it's somewhat like a laundry room, except that it always has an open area, a window or you know, just an open space because we typically dry clothes in a, in a clothesline. And with that, they can understand how the burglar got into the locked apartment. And they also do other activities where they learn vocabulary such as varal and tanki. Uh, which is very useful if you're going to live in Brazil and hang around an area de serviço. Uh, then they watch three videos from three Brazilians and from different generations. And with that, they learn, you know, who was Gina's fat, um, a famous actress. And when they learn about her, they can locate the, the, the reading in its historical period, which was in the mid seventies, early eighties. Finally, in this section, we go back to the literature professor and we watch a video where she talks about the authors. Verissimo, when she talks about his life, uh, his writing style. Uh, she talks a lot also a little bit about the chronica as a literary genre, and we do several interesting uh, activities about that. So next, the next section is, is the reading. We go back to the reading now that we know about, um, about this background. 
and we're going to reread it more in depth. And each reading section starts with the glossary and the link to, to the reading itself. So when we go in here, we have the reading activities, again, with videos and glossaries and several different activities, but this time targeting more in um, reading comprehension and, and writing. Next section is, is the grammar, right? And um, where we're gonna talk more about what grammatical aspects and structures come from the reading or the videos uh, in this uh, unit. So uh, in, in this story, the author uses a lot the conditional verb tense, which in Portuguese we call o futuro do pretérito, or the future of the preterite. And, uh, and a lot, it appears several times in the reading. So the first thing uh, we do, students go back to the reading and they mark or underline this verb tense and they are prompted to reflect why the author uses this verb tense so many times, right? And, and they, they notice that the story starts in the past and the two characters were planning their encounter and then they learn that the future of the preterite we use when we are in the past talking about the future but naturally when we make plans from the future we don't know if these plans will actually happen or not and this is what happened in the story everything that they had so carefully planned ended up did not happening and that's also why the, the story is so funny. It has to do with the humor of the story, right? The amount of times the author uses this, this verb tense. Uh, it prompts us to think about something that ends up happening and that has to do with the humor as well. And then we do other activities, different activities with this verb tense, meaning other things. Um, so, Basically, we're learning and talking about the grammar in the context of authentic materials uh, and the way that grammar is really used in, in, in real life. Finally, we go back to our next section, uh, zoom in or aproximando foco. And as I said, the purpose here is to go back and discuss in greater depth the social cultural topics that arise from the readings through the voices of different Brazilians. So in this unit, topics that we talk about, for instance, is um, how do different inhabitants of the city of Rio de Janeiro, they per perceive the North and the South. Um, what chores can be done in the area de serviço? <laughs> Why, who does those services, right? And what is the origin of this name? What does it reveal about the Brazilian society? Um, is breaking into a house common in Brazil? They talk a lot about TV as well. How does the TV influence Brazilian society and how is this similar or different to the US? So we discuss all these um, questions and topics with several videos of all these Brazilians talking about these issues and doing listening comprehension, um, discussion activities. It's very um, interactive this way, as if the Brazilians were in the classroom with us talking about that as I had originally um, envisioned. So uh, here at UT, some of these activities are done in class and others are, are assigned for, for homework. But uh, let me just pause and let you know that uh, obviously we don't see this in, in one class time, right? Uh, this unit takes in my courses one or maybe two weeks, between one and two weeks to go through all of this and each unit um, the same. So um, in, in my courses, I use Canvas and it's very easy to, to set up Canvas so students can upload their homework from Clicker Brazil through Canvas and it's very easy also to, to grade. But as I said, um, you can upload in other um, systems or platforms, you can email, save on your computer. It's, 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 it's very easy uh, this way. So here you see 
Clica Brasil is the core material for our intermediate Portuguese courses. We don't use anything else. And as I said, I select some activities and videos to do in the classroom and some for homework. We use the grammar bank in all our courses. Uh, I have been using it in the classroom since 2010, and it works really well on face-to-face. -face. Uh, students, they bring their laptops, but it also works with a cell phone, with tablets, everything. It's very easy to access it. And when the pandemic started and we had to move to Zoom, <laughs> it was very easy for me because all the materials are already online. Uh, and it's very accessible. So it was a very, very um, easy transition in, in, in my case. Other institutions, I hear from several of my colleagues, some of them use the entire Clica Brasil curriculum. Some select some parts or it's keeping units or lessons. It's also being used for tutoring and all over the world, people do self-study or just for fun and pastime. Um, and I always like to hear the feedback from my students in the, um, in the spring of 21, I asked my class, and at that time I had 19 students, um, how they believe that Clica Brazil helped them improve certain skills. So 100% of them said that Clica Brazil helped them improve language, listening, oral, writing, grammar, vocabulary, and cross-cultural skills. And 94% believe that uh, Clica Brazil improved their reading skills. I think this is very successful. <laughs> uh, they also wrote several comments and I'm going to pause here and let you read because that's what they wrote. They also mentioned that they like the website and the book because it's an open source that have real people. It's very accessible, it's fun, it's interactive, it's very quick to log in, it works all the time and very fast and it's very readily um, available, whatever. <laughs> it's very dynamic. They like, again, the personal stories. They think that they are engaging and genuine. Also, it's very organized with the variety of topics that are interesting right making um, learning interesting and of course they love that it's free and they don't have, don't have to purchase expensive textbook and materials they, they really appreciate that too so to sum up the advantages of working with clica brazil as an oer it's um it's free it's accessible it's inclusive it's diverse it's dynamic it's well organized, so it's easy to find the content. Works well either on Zoom or in the face-to-face -face classroom, either synchronously or asynchronously. It promotes analytical skills and critical thinking, develops language and cross-cultural skills. It's fun and interesting. And of course, the most important is an effective learning tool. So with that, I end my presentation. Thank you for being here with me today.